Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Today I thought I'd do a video shining the spotlight on the wonderful VST and synthesizer by Arturia called Pigments. And not for any random reason, but a reason that for me separates Pigments from a lot of um, the plugins and VSTs we have with our DAWs and some that we might buy. So let's sort of get in, stuck straight into it, and I'll walk you through the workflow and this particular feature to do with pigments that I think is really great to know about. So the first thing we need to do is I'm on a Mac operating system, and that means that I actually have a few different versions of pigments available. I have the audio units pigments plugin, and then I have it in VST form VST2 and VST3. The most important thing about this workflow that we're going to set up here is that you choose a VST version. It won't work with audio units. So that's the most important thing to point out at the very beginning here. It doesn't matter if it's two or three, it just should be the VST. So I'm going to drag in a VST version of pigments onto an empty MIDI track. That's the first step. And then what we're going to do in the next step here is I'm going to use a built-in Ableton Live native instrument called Drift Synth. And I'm going to drag that over and drop it on the MIDI track next door, an empty MIDI track. And then what we're going to do on the Drift track now is go down to the ins and outs section. And in the MIDI from, we're going to choose pigments and then directly below it, we're going to choose pigments again. And that's the most important thing in this second box that you're also showing pigments. And if you don't see it there, you've got an issue and it's probably that you don't have the VST version just to point that out. While we're here, we're gonna arm the pigment, the drift track, sorry. And then we're gonna head over to pigments. We're gonna open up the synth, the VST, and we're gonna make a couple of adjustments here. So we don't actually want pigments to make any sound at all. So I'm going to turn off the synth engines. And if there's an FX engine on as well, I'm going to switch that off. And I'm going to go over to the sequencer and I'm going to turn that on. And today's video is all about this. It's all about pigments sequencer. It's a great, great sequencer. And what's really amazing about it is we can use this great sequencer to drive other plugins and VSTs, hardware, and get really, really quite creative with it. So now we've got this workflow pretty much set up here on the pigments track, we need a trigger. So I'm just gonna open up an empty MIDI clip, pop in a note on middle C, C3, and make it one bar long legato. So now I've got a trigger on my pigments track, and if I hit play, Drift should now be getting the sequence of pigments which it is, so that's great. So right now we have a default sequencer, initialized sequencer that we could go ahead and customize. But before we do that, let's look at the fact that the pigment sequencer has a bunch of presets and not only just a couple, it has a lot. So it has this factory tab with all of these great presets that you can scroll all the way down through here from A all the way down to S. And then we've also got another tab of more presets with different names on them. And some of these are sort of a little bit more complex and obviously give you further options. So you can flick your way through either or. So let's try some of these out, keeping our drift patch and it's just a, a bog standard drift. So let's go back up to here. Let's have acid one, hit play. Try out some of the others on the other tab. So lots and lots of fun can be had there. Also, as I said, we can customize our own. Let's do that in a moment and make our own sequencer pattern and we can save those. So there's lots and lots and get really creative. As I said, we're just sending this 
currently this sequence to drift it can go to let's try that a little bit so let's say we bookmark another synth of ableton that we quite like a preset of ableton live we could go over to and in my case the collections here and we could say okay what about this preset uh pigments is now going to drive that preset Nice. What about if we wanted to use a third party synth? So we get rid of our Ableton preset here and we go down and let's say we use another Arturia synth. Let's have the Mini Moog over here. Okay, and now we can drive the Mini Moog with again the pigment sequence. Let's set the Mini Moog to the default. We're going to tweak it a little bit. So you get the idea, right? It doesn't, you know, this is beautiful. And as I said, it can send that sequence to hardware. So if you've got hardware synths and drum machines, and we can get really creative. As I said, it doesn't even have to be a synth that the sequence of triggers are going to. It could be to a sampler. It could be to a drum rack in Ableton Live. So all of that good stuff. So let's take a quick look at making our own sequence in Pigments. And I'll walk you around some of the sort of features of this sequence. So keep in mind, like I said, that um, we can send these sequences to another MIDI track or hardware and all that good stuff. So let's pop into the factory tabs here and let's find the initial sequence again. So we're going to scroll on down there and there it is there. And let's pick that. So we're now back into an initial sequence and now we're just going to walk our way around pigments a little bit. So what we've got over here is our 16 steps and we can kind of resize that on the very far right drag it in so if we want a very short like punchy five step sequence we can do that so that's globally moving this step length in and out from 16 steps to however many steps you wish but as you can see it's moving all the different tracks and pigments arteria they call these tracks so we've got on off track which is deciding which steps are switched on and off. We've got a probability lane. We've got pitch, uh, pitch lane or track. We've got velocity, octave control, gate length, and slide. So if we come back over to this side of the sequencer here as well, we can start with our rate of 16th uh, notes or eighth notes and all that good sort of stuff. So let's say we start playing around a little bit with the sequence, going to our mini Moog. And let's start by saying that we tweak the rate a bit. And if we look at the rate, if we click in here where it says sync, we can already change the rate of the sequence quite a lot of ways. You can have it following your global tempo. You can have it as we had, sort of in, in note synced. It can be straight notes, triplets, or dotted. Which is kind of quite interesting because as I said not every uh, sequencer that I know offers us to do triplets and dotted and the BPM so there's some nice features in there swings pretty straightforward we can make the sequence swing and then playback mode is going to be interesting in a moment if we click there we can decide to make the sequence move around inside backwards and forwards and all those good things in there. So next up, we've got this interesting section where we've got polymetry and reset off. If we turn polymetry on, you'll notice straight away that it defaults to changing the step lengths of all the different individual tracks. And that's great because now we have a polymetric sequence. That means all of the different tracks are triggering at different intervals, different step lengths. So we get lots of variety just doing that. And if we go to the reset tab, we can then make those polymetric sequences kind of realign with each other 
uh, when we want to at a certain duration, which is pretty cool as well. So let's get some randomization already in here, which we do coming down the bottom here to this generation section and clicking this big dice here. And again, just below generation, you can choose classic scales for the randomization to follow a certain typical sort of musical scales. And on the right here, we've got these generative uh, scales, which again are really, really interesting. And you can see the notes that are being included in that scale. And right at the very bottom, you've got a probability slider that also you can adjust to decide how the probability of how often those notes are going to trigger within the sequence. Again, there's a lot of depth here. So let's go back here and let's now click uh, contrasting minor. We can leave that. If, by the way, the little magnet is selected to the right, that means it's going to constrain the notes to whatever scale you've chosen here. If it's off, notes can go out, outside of the scale. So if you're wanting to keep the notes constrained into the particular scale you've chosen, turn on the magnet. Now we're going to roll the dice. And as you can see, we've now got some variation over here. And if we turn off polymetry, we're back to our sort of standard length sequencer. Polymetry on. We get all those already default different track lengths. Let's regen again or generate again. Let's change our playback mode. Let's play around with our rate. Ah, so let's check what we're in here. Yes, we are in the sync mode. Okay. Let's put some drums in. Let's try a different scale. Let's have some minor, perhaps. So really cool. We can save these sequences, by the way. So if we hover over here and we were to click that straight away, we can save this, whatever this sequence is we're coming up with, and we can use that to do exactly the workflow we're doing, or we could use it inside of pigments itself to swap out the different synth patches with our own sequence. So like I said, this sequence goes really deep. Maybe one last thing I'll touch on here is the regen. Um, this is also really interesting. So if we click in here, we can again make the synth sequence actually re-trigger itself, regenerate a whole new pattern over a certain, again, length. So given that we've got a bar of triggers or something like that, let's say half a bar, well, it's a little bit faster. Let's say every bar, it's going to give us a new generated sequence. And let's have a listen to that. You can see it triggering. And that again is very, very interesting because not many sequences kind of have this workflow built into them. You can also lock steps along here. So if you don't want them to be included in that change, you can lock that step so that it doesn't uh, become altered. You can also reset the steps at any point in time, just clicking here. It's got like a little reset button. And then you can do more interesting things here as well. So let's maybe come back a little bit. We'll turn off auto regen. So we've got a sequence that's kind of a little bit fixed. Um, we'll leave everything else the same here. But now over here in this box on the random column here, there's a certain percentage of how much each of those tracks will get randomized. And if you simply don't want any of them again to be randomized, you can pull that down to zero. And that will mean that that track effectively will not receive any randomization when you hit the generate dice. If you want some randomization, then you can dial that into taste and you can see it's actually changing things over here as I actually do that. So it's changing the probability or the, in this case, yeah, the probability 
of those steps, the randomization of those steps. So I think it was 25%, let's leave that. And as you can see, you can go down and adjust that for all the different tabs to have exactly the amount of how much randomization you want of these varying targets down here. So let's hit play. We can also mess with these in real time. And I'm going to show you one last thing that I sort of started thinking about and I tried with a, a bit of a creative thought process was could I use some of pigments, uh, you know, envelopes and LFOs and functions and all the beautiful modulation sections we have the pigments. Could I use that to sort of affect this sequence and where could I use it? And the answer is yes, you can. So you could also play around with this. So we could say, let's get a function generator here and let's add that function generator to the rate sync knob of the playback. And you can see now we are moving the, the sync rate knob with this function generator. So let's hit play. <laughs> This is now affecting that, and then we can play around down here with the function generator. Let's get some of the more interesting ones of these in the presets. Okay, let's change the rate so it's going through there a bit. So that's just a little bit of extra there, just a little bit of extra creativity that we can kind of drive this even deeper and further using some of the LFOs or functions or envelopes to modulate some of this sequence for further kind of randomization and depth on top of all the good things that we've already got going on so far. So on that note, I'm going to wrap things up today but I wanted to sort of share, show and share that with you um, that if you are an Arturo Pigments, you know, if you have the plugin, uh, it's a great, great synth. But what sort of separates it and makes it stand out, in my opinion, is features like this. The fact we can take its built-in sequencer and trigger Ableton Live VSTs or instruments, um, samplers, hardware, other plugins. It's really, really fantastic. So get stuck into that. Have fun. Enjoy. Keep on creating. And just one more thing. If you enjoy the content on the channel and you would like more content like this, I actually write a bi-weekly newsletter. It's called Thinking Aloud. And I'll put a link down below in the description that um, a subscription link where you can subscribe to the newsletter. And it's packed full of resources for producers, artists, DJs and performers. So I'll drop a link below where you can sign up to that. It's completely free and you can get that in your inbox every couple of weeks. Lots of tips and tricks. As always, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you all very soon in the next video. Keep on creating and bye for now. Ciao.